Hi, my name is Andrew Berry and this is a quick tutorial for all you Making Jewellery Forum members. It's a quick tutorial on using this Sievert torch that so many of you uh, have got on the forum or are thinking of buying. It's an ideal torch to start with. Um, it's a lot uh, more powerful than the handheld butane torches that you can buy. Um, these are available, I think you can buy them from, I shouldn't say, Hamilton Gas. Uh, I think you can get the needle burner like this one and also the uh, large burner I think for about £54 plus about £4 postage and with that you get the nozzle, the handle, the hose and the regulator that pops down there on the bottle. Fantastic value, I would go and buy one if you had the spare cash. This is a, an 8 kilogram propane tank that really would last you for many years although you can get the shorter four kilogram tanks which are very good and last you about a year. Um, with this particular one we have the adjuster here, uh, it says number two, number four, whether you have a, have a low output or a high output, but with this particular one I always leave it on four. The hose is just connected to the handle here with a Jubilee clip. Um, the handles are readily available, you can get replacements. This is a needle flame nozzle here. Um, it all comes as one, right from here to the end. Alternatively, you can buy, I'll just look through my drawers here. The necks separate here. If you want to use the large if I can find some of those again, there we go. If you want to use the larger burner for melting down. The Siebert torch is excellent. We've used one here in the workshop for well over 20 years and we've gone through various handles and various nozzles because they fall on the floor, they get dented. Um, and they're a brilliant way to start uh, silversmithing and a very good introduction to soldering. And I always light the torch with a cigarette lighter. Let me turn that light off there to show you the flame. It can go right down to quite a fine point. Alternatively, you can turn it up. I'm going to turn the gas on a bit. There we go. Alternatively, you can get a nice flame. Put that behind it so you can see it. Now, the hottest point of this flame is right on the tip here. Right where, you've, got, you've got, basically got three cones. You've got one cone shape that comes right out. You can just see it on the film that comes out to roughly about by here. You have another cone that comes out where it's light blue, just to the point there. And then you have another cone that comes to roughly halfway along here. Now, the hottest point of that flame is right on the tip here. That is the hottest point. You can see by this soldering probe. It yeah, is the hottest point. So if you want to gain the most amount of heat in a small area, you always make sure that when you solder, this tip of the cone here is right on the joint where you want it. If you bring the item too close down here, although this is getting bright, it's not as hot down here as it is right in that spot there. And likewise, up at the tip here, yes, this is very hot, but it's not as hot as that tip. And if I use my torch now to come vertically down on this soldering block, you can see that the soldering block is starting to get hot right in the center. And as the closer I go, the hotter that section will become. I come closer and closer and closer. Now that is at the hottest point, right in the centre. If I go closer, you'll see there will be a black hole in the centre. And although that is hot, that is not the hottest point. The hottest point now is around the outside of it. If I'm soldering anything small, and I bring the torch too close in the centre, it will not solder. You need to bring that down so the tip of this flame here is right where you want the hottest part to be. So say you wanted to anneal this piece here and you wanted a nice soft bushy flame. 
But if you notice on the torches here, there are holes. And as the propane comes through the torch here, it sucks air in with it that produces this really, really hot flame. Now if I put my finger over these holes, that flame will get softer. And you can actually hear the difference. That hissing is quite a hot, hot heat. And if I put my fingers over the holes, I restrict the amount of oxygen, or the amount of air, coming down. So if you wanted to have a soft, bushy flame, we can always put your fingers over the holes and do this. Not something that I would recommend. As I said to you earlier, this is the hottest part of the flame. Up here is the coldest part of the flame. So, if you want to anneal something, just gently move that gentle heat. This is a very direct heat, right at this tip. It's very directional. Up here is quite broadcast and quite wide. So if you want to anneal a piece like this, and you want it an even heat, just use the end of the first cone, as I explained earlier, just to go up and down, rather than give a directional heat like this. Because you cannot guarantee that there will be a nice even annealing action throughout the whole piece. So just gently move that back and forth. Like that. And again you can quench that in the acid or you can leave it to air cool naturally. So, easy isn't it? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Simple torch for excellent soldering techniques. Use clean water, Rowan. Don't use anything else. Don't use even use spit. Use fresh, clean water. Ideal thing is to have one of those little um, misting bottles that uh, you do for misting plants. On your bench, a few squirts into the borax dish. Ideal. Make sure your borax is clean, your brush is clean, your work is clean, you'll have no problems. And don't forget to heat up the piece if it's a large piece, so the piece is nice and nice and hot for when you come to solder it. And if you're having very, very thin wire, well then turn the flame down. Turn the torch down until you have a very, very small flame coming out the top. Well, I'm Andrew Berry. For all you making jewellery guys and gals out there, see you next time.